Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Extreme Memories, everything XPW, and that is brought to you by these guys right here. You can see it behind me. They're asking you to subscribe even, and so am I. You got to subscribe now, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube.com forward slash, oh, there it is. The wrestling chatter. No, we're not at a taping of the Morton Downey Jr. show. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, uh, brought to you by the wrestling chatter. And the more subscribers, folks, that the wrestling chatter receives, huh, the more great content we can bring to you. Now, I'm going into a little announcer esque. <laughs> Chris Claus here. And I don't know why, it's just coming out naturally. Oh, that's the reason why right there. Hey, I'm talking about we had the other Larry Rivera on. Now we have the other Larry <laughs> Rivera on, a.k.a. as you see, Juan Tastico. And we are going to get into all that. But um, on and off the screen, uh, I always enjoyed working with this gentleman here. We became very close friends off screen. So um, a great seeing you, my friend. Welcome to Extreme Memories with Chris Kloss right here on YouTube, right here on the Wrestling Chatter channel. Uh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Uh, means a lot. Good to see you. It's been a long, long, long time. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, too long, brother. Um, but yeah, man, so um, I'm, I'm glad you're on here. Uh, and again, for the fans, every 15th and 30th of the month, new episodes. Um, and just uh, share this, like it, please like it, share it, and uh, subscribe. I don't know in that order, but just do them all, please. Yeah. And, um, and we'll bring more content to you the more subscribers we get. So thank you so much. Uh, this is Extreme Memories, and we're going to get right into it with Juan Tastico, uh, my old co-host from XPW TV. Uh, wrestling superstar tag team wrestling superstar with another legendary uh, guy who we'll talk about and um but uh gabriel which is your name juan tastico rivera whatever um let's talk first let's start out you're from southern california correct right right yeah and uh how did you long before xpw how did you get started in pro wrestling and you can even go beyond that when did you when when did you get the bug when 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 did you know that god oh, this is this is i love this business wow well um thank you for for uh allowing me such a wide uh birth there to to go into it uh the bug uh, always lifelong lifelong wrestling fan um, grew up, can't remember a time that I didn't love wrestling. It was, it was there. My childhood was, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, uh, followed by, you know, Kung Fu theater, followed by, you know, the wrestling challenge and, and, uh, and, and superstars. And I grew up, um, yeah, watching that and, and then being, uh, uh, being of uh, Mexican descent, you know, Lucha Libre was always in the background. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember a time when, when it wasn't, you know, a part of what I was into as a kid. And um, I remember being still in elementary school when, when, you know, you get around that age, like fifth grade, sixth grade around there where everyone, when you realize what it is and, um, you get the, the, the two types of people, the people that are, you know, I guess broken hearted. They realize, you know, they've always been told by, you know, whoever it is in their family that's all oh, it's fake. And you always defend it as a kid, as a child, You're like, no, it's not, it's not fake. And then yeah. then you have that one experience where you see it and you see what it is and you go, either you you give into it, they go, like, Oh my god, it's fake and 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 you then no longer want to be a wrestling fan or uh, like myself, I assume like you and anybody else who got into the business, right? You see it for what it is finally, and then it's just wow, it, it just opens up. You're like, I want to know more. What yeah. else is there? Tell me more. And so that happened to me when you know it was around fifth, sixth grade when, when I, I started seeing, like, hey, how come that happened? And <laughs> hey, is he talking to him right there? 
and then I just was captivated and I wanted to know more. And then, um, and then moving forward, it was, uh, I caught the real bug that, that, that put that, the, the desire to want to pursue it happened probably in my late teens, early twenties. I don't remember exactly the time, but I remember it was a pay-per-view something back in the days of, of, uh, of the black boxes. Not saying I, I myself partook in anything, but let's just say maybe I knew a guy who knew a guy that allowed me to watch, uh, you know, those old black box uh, pay-per-views without actually paying for them. Yeah, it was per view. Just per view. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one. Um, it was a match between uh, Sting and Muda, and it was my first introduction into. It's the wow. first time I had seen uh, wrestling in Japan. I was aware, obviously, uh, Japan, you know, had wrestling and everything, but I had never had the privilege of seeing. I, I didn't have, you know, the my my social circle, my family wasn't into, you know, getting tapes or anything like that. So it was the first time I had seen a a wrestling event, a pay-per-view event, and it was in Japan, and it was all, you know, uh, NWA or, or WCW guys versus Japan guys. Right. It was the first time I saw Muda. I was familiar with Sting. It was Sting versus Muda. First time I had seen Muda, and Muda caught my eye. Muda caught my attention. I was just like, this guy's something else. It was very much that same, um, like, how Undertaker came out. They're very mysterious. They're very, like, uh, you know, the the mystique yeah. about him, like, right. like Quang, like with all these guys that come out with that that gimmick, and I just I I fell for his gimmick, right. and and I was into it. And then with Sting, and and they had this match. They wrestled for like an hour, and the finale of the match, I never didn't know anything about Muda. The finale of the match was they wrestled for like an hour, and the finale of the match was the Muda missed, and yeah. I was just I was blown away, and I was like, man, I would I would love to be able to do this one day. That's where the 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 seed was planted. And um, it was always there, but it was never any real way uh, for me to uh, really get into it. I never really pursued it really seriously. Basically, uh, it was backyard, you know, throwing my cousins around in the backyard, uh, doing, you know, high, high cross bodies off the diving board in the swimming pool. Uh, anybody who was swimming just because they were there and you're like, Jimmy Superfly, and, you know, yeah. killing somebody in the swimming pool, things like that. and. Um, Few years uh, later, about 90, 96, 97, uh, when the uh, the whole uh, Monday Night Wars uh, started happening, it was it became you know habit. Every Monday, I was uh, watching wrestling. I'm sure like a lot of people were. I mean, the ratings were through the roof. So I like many many people were we were. I was watching you know Monday Nitro, uh, Raw, and um, Watching them, you know, what was like four hours of wrestling uh, every week, something like that. And, and you still, and you still couldn't get enough back. Then. And you still couldn't get enough. You were still wondering, you know, and and following, and you know, you're you're subscribed to the to the 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 wrestling, uh, the what is it, the Observer and all that to try to get yeah. every little tidbit of information. And I remember sitting there and I'm watching a match. Uh, I think it was a. a Scott Hall and and one of you know they'd always throw people in there at the end, right. and I remember sitting there and it just dawned on me, like I'm, I'm physically capable of doing this, and then, and then you know, week after week that little thought just kept you know growing and bubbling, and and it, it came upon some you know mid level match I don't know who it was, um. And seeing what they were doing in the ring, and I'm like, I, I, I can absolutely do this. I can do this. I, I know I can do this. And I started, I started looking around. The first, the first uh, phone call I made, uh, first phone call I made, I found was local. It was Slammers. Oh. I called and left a message, and um, I got a call back, and was basically told, uh, kind of like a, a. a, a Short, uh, real quick, three question interview, and I guess I didn't answer the questions to the person's delight. And there's, yeah, you're not cut out for this, kid. Hung up on me, and that was it. I'm like, okay, well, um, I kept looking. I looked into, I, 
at the time what was the 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 power plant wcw power plant i looked into oh, that wow. uh, and uh, it was kind of cost prohibitive but i had decided i can do this i kept looking and then the monster factory okay in new jersey and i had reached out to the monster factory in new jersey and had actually started making headway and going there and at the same time in real life i started i started a new job and at this new job i was uh like front desk for a pharmaceutical uh for a pharmacy a long-term care pharmacy so you so you were you you were a member of the power plant or the, uh, the one in jersey too or are you no, no, i i never made it as far as to going to the power plant because they were too expensive right. from there i called uh, the monster factory and was making an, an an in ways there to start going there at the same time I started a new job at that job. Basically I was a front desk, uh, like security receptionist. And so, you know, I'd always have my wrestling magazines, uh, yeah. at the front desk, you know, answering phones, doing whatever. And one of the ladies that worked uh, in the billing department, um, just happened to be walking by one of these days and she's like, Oh, you're into wrestling. I was like, well, yeah, totally. She goes, Oh, my brother's a wrestler. I was like, Oh really? Who is he? And she's like, Oh, you probably want to hear You probably never heard of him. He, he's he's not big time like the guys on TV. I'm like, I've probably heard of him. You know, I got the wrestling. I had always had all the, you know, the PWI and all the wrestling magazines. And she said, no, you probably never heard of him. I said, tell what what's his name? She said, oh, his name's Hombre de Oro. And I look at her and I, the very magazine I'm looking at, I'm flipping through. They had a, a spread on slammers. They just happen wow. to have that. And I go, this is this guy, your brother. She's like, yeah, that's him. I'm like, no way. Are you kidding? She's like, yeah, no, totally. That's him. She goes, do you want to meet him? I said, uh, yeah. I've been trying to break into, you know, I want, I'm interested in, in getting into wrestling. Who later, who later on in XPW came, became Carlito Montana. Exactly. Later on would become known in the XPW world right. as uh, Carlito. And mm -hmm. so um, she set up the meet with me and him. And he, he also was pretty gruff on the phone and, and, and kind of like dismissive a little bit. Like, are you sure you want to be a wrestler kid? I was like, yeah, yeah. Totally. He goes, all right, we'll tell you what, come down. Come to my apartment. You come with me and check it out and see what it's all about. Uh, so we made plans to go that uh, like the following Saturday or whatever. I drove to his apartment. Never met him before. Just talked to him on the phone. Nice guy. It was just kind of, you know, very, you know, I was really wanting to be a wrestler. So um, I went to a stranger's apartment. Hey, man, he could have, you know, kidnapped me and dismembered my body. I don't know. But I go to his apartment and then he drives me to Slammers and it was, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the garage shop, we pull into, you know, the, yeah. the, the driveway with all the mechanics. And I'm like, where the hell am I? Like, this guy's going <laughs> to, you know, I'm, I'm going to be murdered right now. I'm maybe, like, maybe, maybe he is taking me away. I'm, I'm about to be murdered. I'm going to be, uh, you know, the next victim on the serial killers, uh, list here. Yeah. And, but sure enough, you know, he opens the door, we come in and literally, I mean, it's, it was like almost like a magic trick. He yeah. opens the door. We here we are. We hear the power tools going off over here, and, and and then he opens the door, and just like magic, it's this office with all this wrestling memorabilia, and the the, the front office was just just covered like pictures yeah. of wrestling. Like I was just like sensory overload. I'm like, wow, what right. is all this stuff? And and you know, right through the office to the back to where the ring was, and I was just like, wow, this is it. And I had never been that close to a ring. I had never been anywhere near anything like that. I never, right. as big as a wrestling fan as I was, my exposure was never in person. I had always, uh, it was only television and, and pay-per-view and whatever. I'd never been to a live show, never really been to a live show. Um, wow. Not even as a kid, not nothing. It just, it never worked out for me to, to, to do that. So no, 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 trips um, the, no trips to the LA sports arena, nothing, nothing like okay. that. It was always just on TV and what I'd seen, okay. you know, television and whatnot. And, um, and, um, you know, we're there and, and a couple of more people show up and, uh, I, I remember Carlos saying something to me to the effect of but first, one of the first things he told me was you're going to get hurt. There's, this isn't, this isn't, you know, you probably won't make any money. You're going to get hurt. So if you're going to do this, it's going to be because you love it. I'm like, okay, well, so far check and check. Let's let's. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. And um, he proceeded to put on a match for me. Um, it was uh, in in the slammers. Wow. There, I guess it was just it was just myself. It was uh, Carlito. It was uh, 
the wrestler later to be known as Messiah. Right. Mr. Billy Welch was there. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ed Slammers was known as beautiful Bruce Bodine. Ed Ferreira. And Ed Ferreira. And I believe it was uh, Ed's wife, girlfriend or wife, um, <coughs> was there. And then told me to have a seat. I'm sitting down. And um, uh, Carlos and Billy put on this match. And um, and uh, Ed's wife was the referee, and they put this match right in front of me. No, no kayfabe or nothing. They just like started going off and had a, a full on match, and it was without a doubt one of the most incredible matches I'd ever seen. I'd never been <clears throat> that close to the action, and I mean, you, I'm you come from Slammers, you've seen that kind of action. They were laying into each other. Oh, and dude. You could, you could feel the chops. You could feel the the kicks, and I was just like, "Wow!" And it was an incredible match. Uh, for for they, what was in, one of the things that just was uh, impressed upon me that day was they went at it, and they had an incredible match, and they they went into each other, and it was for an audience of one. Right. Nobody else was there. There were no cameras. There was no crowd. It was me, <clears throat> and they had this amazing match for my benefit. And it was a great match. It was thoroughly entertained. Amazing. And, and after the match, Carlos comes. I was just, you know, I was in awe. I mean, I didn't even know how to how to respond. Carlos comes up to me and goes, so you sure you want to be a wrestler? And I said, yes, sir. And after that, um, yeah. I was come back next week. And I was at, I was at, you know, I was at, I was enrolled in Slam U at that point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how it started. That's how I got in Slammers. Yeah, so Slammers, again, I mean, I've talked about it a lot on the show. Um, a lot of the guys out here, that was one of, that was, I mean, I was going to say that was one of the only places, which it was, but that was really the only place, like you said, you walk into it, especially being around all the industrial garages, whatever. And it was, you're right. That's a good way to put it. It was like, you open the door, it was like a magic trick. It was like, one, why, what is this building existing among these other buildings? Two. Right. How is this building just even exist? <laughs> like, what is this place? You know, and it was, it was like this hidden fantasy land in a way. And um, so, you know, you, you mentioned some names, a lot of guys that eventually transitioned uh, one step or another into XPW eventually. And that's where we get into um, XPW. So Slammers, did its thing. Dynamite D, Patrick Hernandez, Kevin Kleinrock went off, formed SCCW. <clears throat> so they were uh, uh, going to, going at it simultaneously. And there were a few others popping up at that time in the, in the mid to late 90s, which it's not like today where there's indie leagues everywhere, right? But um, so, so then, okay, SCCW, uh, which was branched off but not working at all with Slammers, that was kind of the league that unofficially, unofficially became at XPW. But, but again, there were guys still at Slammers. There were guys still at IWF uh, with Gary Key. There were guys at the UIWA, <clears throat> EWF. There were a few, a few things still going on at the time in Southern California. Correct me if I'm wrong if EWF, but I'm sure it was at that time. Um, but so now you weren't there in the very beginning but when did you get in and how did you get into XPW? One pass to go. Well, um, let me let me start by saying I when I so when I was at Slammers, uh, I was happy. And um, we had heard we had heard about so because remember now I went into Slammers. This is after the big Dynamite D, yeah. Exodus, whatever yeah. that that event was, it was. You were, you were you were you were there with Billy Messiah, and when I was talking to him, we kind of relived and figured out that okay, he was in Slammers same time you were. After again, D and them left, uh, right. falling out with Vern Langdon, the the head of Slammer, the head Slammer, right. So at that time, when I you would say, well, Billy like lived through it and went through it, and I guess at the time chose Slammers, and so when when I came in, uh, Billy, I guess you would say was you know the had graduated and was the the main 
you know, newest graduate, and that was like the new class. But all of it was post this big um, event that happened. And it was really strange because when Vern was in the building, we didn't talk about it at all. But when Vern wasn't in the building, there was rumblings, and, and they wouldn't even talk to the new guys about it. We'd kind of overhear it amongst them and what was going on. And so um, when XPW started happening, we would kind of hear about what was going on, but it was kind of like um, we weren't allowed to pursue or follow XPW in any way. That wasn't what we were about. The you know, I would say in, to, to my memory, and, and, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but to my memory, Vern was, was very much anti-Dynamite D and anything Dynamite D had to do with. He right. he blamed D for that. And we like we were new going into Slammers. And for me, Slammers was, at that point, everything. And I was very impressed by Slammers when I got there because I think like right away after my first uh I think after two weeks, we were already on TV at some you know, Fox Sports Net something. Another two weeks, it was an ESPN something or other. Another two weeks, it was some uh, Spanish channel network was coming. So there was TV cameras in like all the time. And, right. and I would say maybe, I don't remember how long it was, maybe six months to a year in, uh, we got a, a, the opportunity to be part of a, of a television show. And uh, <clears throat> story along, like we shot a pilot. So, uh, like all this happened so quickly. So I was very much team slammers and whoever, oh yeah, you, you know, whatever else was out. I believed what I was told. And for me, um, Dynamite D and all these guys that that did this, uh, for lack of a better term, insurrection at at Slammers, um, they were bad guys. Not to be, right. you, know, you weren't supposed to, uh, you know, associate with them or worry about them or anything. Uh, you, we were going to do our own thing. We were, you know, classic, you know. Classic wrestling, old school wrestling is what Slammers right. was about. We didn't worry about this other stuff. We didn't worry about anybody else. Yeah. Um, and then the first time I got any other kind of opinion on XPW, I got booked on a ma on a show uh, to do a private show in in Las Vegas um, with some some legends. For me, legends. Uh, uh, Vern got a call that uh, uh, Barry O. Oh, very old. Very, very old was doing a, a a show in Vegas for a private audience, um, and that he needed he needed a a, a young small baby face to come out and uh, you know basically job, and and uh, he was gonna be part he was gonna be part of the show and and uh, Vern sent him some pictures he picked me, and um and I went to Vegas signed contracts it was like my first experience into professional wrestling I signed. Uh, contracts he put me up in a hotel for three days wow uh, flew, flew me out uh limousine picked me up i thought it was just me i had no idea i get to the airport and i'm you know i get out to get see the guy holding the signs for our names and i see my name and my name is on the same card as uh honky tonk don morocco and wow. cowboy bob orton wow and I'm like, no i had no idea they were you know so uh I get in the limo and we're waiting. Mm -hmm. In comes Honky Tonk. In comes Don Morocco. In comes Cowboy Bob Orton and uh, Randy Orton at the time, very young Randy Orton, and some, wow. other, uh, some other female talent that was coming in to do the show. And we take the limousine all the way to the hotel. And I'm just, I'm just in awe. And you know, it, Slammer is that you know, Vern always said, "Keep your mouth shut. Don't you know? Don't speak unless spoken to." So I'm, you know, just quiet, just observing these guys talking about the last time they were over here in this state, and last time they do this, and they're telling their stories, and and inside I'm like, <laughs> but you know, outside I'm like, yeah, you guys are, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, we're here to do a show. <laughs> we're here to do a show. Yeah, we're all professional wrestlers here. <laughs> uh, you know, how many times are you wrestling? Uh -huh, me? How many? <laughs> uh, enough? Uh, you know, and um. And then, uh, and then Honky Tonk turns to me. and goes, you, you're, "You're from Slammers, right?" I said, uh, "Yes, sir." So you're from California, yes, sir. How's that? How's that? Uh, X three XPW, the, the porn guys. How they doing over there? I said, uh, "As far as I know, they're doing all right." He's like, "Ah, man, I've been hearing about that. I wonder if they're booking. They're booking talent like 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 us right now." Like, ah. 
I don't know, man. I'm slammers, and that was like the last time, the first and last time Honky talked to me that that whole trip. But that was, that was enough. We uh, that was, and that's it. And well, I heard them then start talking about XPW and what like what was going on and how they and so I, hearing them talk about it, they XPW had a buzz. XPW definitely had a buzz because here I am sitting with, like I said, my from my generation growing up. Don Morocco, Cowboy Bob, uh, Honky Tonk, and they're talking about the the splash that XPW is making, right. and so I'm just like, huh. So you know, my I was obviously now paying a little bit more attention. Uh, fast forward to um, after all that and all the exposure we were getting there at, at Slammers, I had a falling out at Slammers um, because uh, I. Uh, they were doing the the first big video for us, and it was at the time it was going to be the big. We had been doing shows, uh, six man tournaments, and we were getting in shape to do to shoot the big video, the newest video in in like who knows how long. Right. And um, we were all supposed to get in shape. I was not happy with the way I was looking, so instead of wearing what uh, the the costume that Vern gave me uh, to wear my my look. I um, I modified it, and instead of wearing the the traditional slammers, you know, the speedo, I myself ordered a, a singlet, and it was the the regular, you know, long like biker shorts, one piece color Mr. with Perfect. the whole kind of like the Mister Perfect look, and I got it basically in the same pattern as my my pattern at, at slammers that I was designed was like the white tiger or zebra stripe kind of look. So I got the same print, but I just was, you know, I didn't want my, I wasn't proud of my physique. So I wanted to hide it. So I had, I bought that thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so I time of the television, the, whatever the videotaping, I put that on instead of my, my um, speedo and, you know, did the whole thing or whatever. Come to find out after the taping, Vern was pissed, pissed, and I didn't know why. And um, it turns out um, I didn't know, but apparently that was like one of Dynamite D's looks, that black and white stripe singlet double thing. Yeah. It looked exactly like Dynamite D. Yeah, exactly. And Vern even thought like I was... Of, of like a mole or something like Dynamite D planted me there I to do know. this on his video. Like, and there was no, I never really got a chance to say like, no, I, I, I wasn't, I don't know D. I just what was, a, I fell out of shape. What, I a, didn't what, want a, my what, a, what a crazy coincidence and in, in bad, in bad luck. Right. Yeah. And then, and then so, <laughs> so that happens and basically um, I get kicked out. I leave behind Angel, Mongo, um, you know, uh, I think Billy had already, Billy had already kind of started, uh, Billy had already left. Yeah. Uh, Carlos at the time, I think Carlos had already, had already started working for XBW. He right. had Vern's blessing though, because, you know, he was one of the pros, the guys or whatever. Vern said, yeah, it's cool if you want to go make, if they're going to pay you and you want to go work, go ahead. Um, he, had, he had a lot of respect for Carlos. Yeah. So yeah. then I was basically out. And then so, um, you know, I was still, I still had, you know, guys' phone numbers and everything. So I called Carlos. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. He's, uh, well, you know what? I, I was telling him, like, what do I do? Like, how do I get back on Vern's good side? Like, tell me what I can do. Like, so he knows that I, I don't know, you know, D. I don't know anything about, you know, all I know about what happened is what I learned from you guys. I really meant nothing by it. I'm sorry. Yeah. He said, you yeah. know what? Forget about Slammers. I'll, I'll I'll put in a word at XPW. Just relax, you know. Don't worry about it. You're a graduate. You can work. Do your thing. So I started doing little indie indie stuff around that around that time. There was one place called uh, All Star Wrestling. Yeah, they were of like a VFW somewhere, and I was uh, I was putting on a mask. That was my favorite thing to do was put on a mask and uh, wrestle under under a mask. So. I was doing that and having fun, doing some shows in Lancaster, things like that. And um, and then, yeah, Carlos called me and said, yeah, come come on down. Kevin wants to meet you, something to that effect. Um, I had a tape, uh, a very poorly edited tape from the uh, show with Barry O. 
um, just a couple of seconds here and there, a promo. Mm -hmm. It was just really badly edited together, but it was the tape was enough. But it showed me coming out to Pyro because it was very. They put a lot of money into the show, so there was the entrance was Pyro. Uh, they had sets for my for my you know my one my one promo that I was you know talking, and um and I had a little valet girl, and they showed Barrio beat my ass for like seven seconds, and that was basically my audition tape. Right. And apparently that was good enough. Hmm. And that was they told me, hey, yeah, hmm. welcome to AEW. We're not we're not doing any shows right now, but okay. welcome to AEW. So this was like uh, summer fall of two thousand. Yeah, when I came in, it was that hiatus. Yeah, where there, I guess the sports arena was done for whatever reason, but there was no, yeah, there was no, there was no wrestling. And there was a buildup to the match, unfortunately, that never took place, which was the Onita Sabu exploding ring, which would have been the first in the U.S. Um, and arguably the one Vic Grimes did with uh, with uh, Supreme in um, Pico Rivera, arguably. Uh, there's one in the East Coast, and either one of those ended up being the first ever, but for sure, Sabu Onita, a huge missed opportunity for XBM. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but so, yeah, so you're right. The sports arena, something happened with it. and um, But during that time, we were building up the uh, Onita Sabus. That fell through. So we were in limbo trying to find a new arena, the Rob Black Arena, what was it going to be. Um, but I remember that time. It was a kind of dismal time in the company because there was no wrestling. We weren't doing anything. Um, but so you came in right around that time. We're talking, like you said, um, fall of like late summer, early fall of 2000. And uh, we ended up doing a show at Metal Fest uh, in San Bernardino. Uh, that was our first show back after the sports arena was lost after Go Funk Yourself. Uh, I want to say July or August of 2000. And, um, but now where were you, were you, is that when you came into XPW was right around the time metal fest or even just before that? Actually it was, uh, <clears throat> sure I came in right around the time because when I was there, I was there for a long period of time without any wrestling oh, yeah. and we would come in it was just around that time because there weren't going to be any shows. I I think it was Tuesdays. It was supposed to be the Tuesday meetings. Yeah, Tuesday meetings. And but, we, uh, we, do, we do Tuesday. Everybody would come. And then Wednesday was myself and Rivera and, and Webb and Kevin. And we do the TV on right. Wednesdays. Yeah. Right. And then whenever the work wasn't the, the Tuesday meeting was also the workout day, right? When yeah. The, I think there, was before, 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 before the meeting, they would work out and then. And then we'd have the meeting, and then maybe a few guys would fool around in the ring a little bit afterward. Right. So I came in, and since uh, you know <laughs> Kevin had said, "You know, welcome to XPW," I had nowhere to work out. That was the only ring I had available to me. So I was there every Tuesday. They're like, "We can work out." Yeah, Tuesdays the day we work out. And so yeah. I was working out, and because I guess what the fallout from uh, Sabu Onita, and and I guess you know whatever was happening before I actually got my foot in the door. Nobody was really sure. Just a couple of guys would come in just to, you know, bump and work out just because the ring was there, but I was going every Tuesday. And then uh, shortly after I was there at XPW, for whatever reason, I guess uh, Slammers closed its doors again. And so then uh, the guys from Slammers reached out to me and we're saying like, hey, like, what's going on? I said, oh well, you know, if you want, let me see if you guys can come work out here. And that's how um, Angel, and then Mongol, uh, ended up uh, getting their foot in the door too. And right. so I, you know, I don't remember exactly how the introductions were made or whatever, but I know that they were okayed to come in and, and start working out there too. And and uh, I remember that's you know, and and we were doing our thing. We were just happy to be in the ring, kind of like kids, like. Kids that don't have a basketball and you're at the park yeah. and somebody just put the ball and you're like, yeah, everybody gets to play. So totally. we were like, yeah, we had a ring, so we were we were happy to just be in the ring of, you know, working out and you know, unbeknownst to us, you know, Rob obviously that's his office, so he would be you know walking in and out and you know peeking and I, I know that's where he you know got his first gl glimpse of uh, of Angel <laughs> as as well as the rest of us. So so we were there for it was quite some a smell. <laughs> 
remember um, wanting and just being a fan. Be I remember I was a fan of you and Larry, so I would come even on Wednesdays and watch you guys take. Right. Yeah, I would hang out. I'd just be kind of like. I mean, I, I had nowhere to be, you know, just like, hey, if I can't work out, these guys are, let me, let me see what's going on. This is, you know, look at these guys, they're on TV. And, 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 um, yeah, I was, a, I, honestly, I was a fan. I mean, it was something different, it was something new. And I had never seen two characters like you guys. There, there have been, you know, characters <laughs> on TV, but nothing like you guys. So, it was, it was, it was, yeah, something to watch you guys do it. And I had fun watching you guys. So, yeah, I'd work right. out on Tuesdays, and when I could, I'd come back on Wednesdays and, and watch you guys do your thing. Well, thank you, man. Um, let's, let's, okay, so your, 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 your timeline matches because uh, when Metal Fest happened, that's in November of 2000, that's when Angel debuted. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so you're in there right around that time. And you're right, you didn't do a lot for a while at that point. And I remember knowing you then when, when Pat Larry was, was, we were still doing the show. So you were kind of one of those guys that was, would help out like the ring crew and, and, and security. And it's like, okay, some of these guys are going to start wrestling, you know, when <clears throat> almost like that was XPW's way of having enhancement talent, if you will, you know, right, right. but, um, um, okay. So before we get into, I'm going to try to go in order here. So before we get into how you got presented with, I mean, I remember this when Pat left and it was just like, everyone was scrambling. What do we do? You know, but, but, um, before we get into that, I want to get into a little something. You and I uh, knew each other, but we didn't really be click and become good friends until we started working on TV as broadcast partners together. Um, but we definitely knew each other. We were cool with each other. And I remember going one time, uh, I signed up for a voiceover class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you want to talk about a small world. There, there was a place, I don't know if it still exists. It was, it was a great school. It was called the Learning Tree, the Learning Tree Annex in mm -hmm. Chatsworth, Chatsworth, California, and they had a they had a lot of great, wonderful classes: uh, improv, commercial voiceover, animation voiceover, and I and I I delved, dove into a lot of that even before I was uh, doing XPW. But um, but we I go to this. Uh, it was this was this was sports broadcasting out over the mm -hmm. PA. Like, right, PA announcing. Yeah, and it was done by the uh, the PA guy who do, did the LA Sparks the, at WNBA team. He was right. the guy that actually did this class, and there were only like three, four people in this class, and it <laughs> and it just so happens that we just we just ended up doing this class together. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah. To, to the point where I think on the first day of school of class, it was a night class, night school. And on the first day of class, I think you were wearing your XPW shirt. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. And I was wrong. So yeah. this is, here's here's the thing. And I, I, I would say I think that's what caused us. That's what sparked our, our friendship yeah. before right. anything else. Because completely. Um, completely. I, I signed up for that class. And I had seen you. You were, to me, you were a Chris Kloss. XPW announcer, you and Larry Rivera. And so it was very much in the office, it was very much like, hey, what's up, bro? You know, just the, you know, the highs and buys, you know, we work right. in the same place. How you doing, man? Good job. You know, hey, good. Yeah. I was good, you know, just, you know, nonchalant, very, very, you know, back and forth. No, no camaraderie really, but, but cordialness and, you know, professionalism because we work in the same place. Here I am. Um, I don't even remember really why. Um, I got into, I was interested in that class. Um, I know that I didn't, I don't know what got me. I don't know why I picked that class. I, hey, I, you know what? It was like, it was meant to be though. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, now you can look back and say, oh, now it makes sense. It happened for a reason. You right. Know? Like, right. But, at the time, <laughs> but at the time you were right. You were even like kind of, you wanted to be a wrestler at the time. Yeah, I wanted to be a wrestler. And I think, I think in my head, in a way I was, I, in my head, well, I figured like I could be long-term, I could do, learn how to do, maybe do like a Howard Finkel 
do something like that so that I can earn that professionalism. So if anything, if I ever even got a shot somewhere, I could be the ring announcer that bumps, you right. know, like that, that's, that was what I was thinking. Like, as long as I learn presence and, and proper diction and how they do this PA in a big thing, I think, you know, that's something I can have in my repertoire for whatever reason, if I don't get to wrestle, I was like, Hey, look, I went to school to be a ring announcer, you know? So that's, that was um, the thought behind that. And I'm sitting there, I, I, and then and then in comes XPW announcer Chris Claus, and I was like, "Hey, this guy!" And but, you did this, you saw the shirt, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh!" And yeah. and yeah, and that was like, "Hey, you know, common interest, common interest." And I think, yeah, we and it was just a, a week. We saw each other every week for sure yeah. there and in the office. So it was like, right. "Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man?" And yeah, that's I where mean, we, yeah, that that class lasted. I would, I'm guessing, like at least two months, like once yep. a week. Yeah, yep. something like that. But uh, yeah, that that I just I just thought of that before because we, we talked earlier today on the phone, and and that actually just came to me right now. So I, I forgot about that. But uh. But okay, so so you're you're there. We're, we're doing that class together, which was cool. And and again, a class like that. I mean, I did the groundlings, all that, all that stuff helps in wrestling. Right. You know, like like the the um and the learning tree in Chatsworth, the, the PA class announcing class. It's like all that stuff. It it, it can only help. You right. know, <clears throat> it probably helps in your promos, everything, man. But yeah. um, so so. We're going to fast forward. I want to say to like, what was it? Late 2001 or 2002 when, um, when Rivera took off. Um, so I, I'm going to defer to you with the timeline because I really don't remember. It was right uh, around, it was late 01, early 02, somewhere in there. Something like that. So yeah. I remember um, it was, the, the 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 second office, the newer office yeah, in North uh, Hollywood, in North Hollywood, and um, that day was just one of those days. Um, I remember, I remember, even from before, because, I mean, because we were there. We I, like I said, I was always there, getting in the ring and and you know wanting to just keep wrestling, just get my workout on. Um, and we'd always be in the ring, so we naturally always see you and Larry getting ready for your stuff, doing your stuff. And I don't know if you recall, but I would – it was fun for me, and I would hope – I mean, it was fun for everybody because people would come up to me and they'd be like, do, do, do Chris, do Chris, or, or do Larry, do Larry. And so I was pretty good at doing an impression of the shady. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was kind of like my little. I mean, I never meant it as like making fun of you guys, no, but it was I, no, I not at all, man. No, it, it was a, uh, it was uh, you know, imitation is the sincerest yeah. form of flattery, and, and and it's a credit to both of you guys that that you guys are easily you know imitated like that because you there's something to it. It's it's yeah. it's kind of like if you think about it like uh, the Martin characters or the in living color characters. Or the Key and Peel characters, everybody, yeah. you know, the next day at work or the next day at school, everybody's imitating them because right. it's funny. Yeah. And so that's what I was doing with you and, and Larry all the time. I'd go up to you guys and be like, Oi, Chico, you know, and, and everybody, ah, do Larry, do Larry. So it was something that was going that I just yeah. would do. I would do Chris or I would do Larry as a. As everyone's, a different. everyone's different because there are people that, uh, that either take offense to that or they they love it and i i liked it so um but you're right there people can you can mean it one way like they say um if you if you have like a favorite comedian or a favorite actor and it's it's you always hear like the never meet your hero type thing because yeah. you can, like you could mean you could have the best intentions in mind and you could to say something it can backfire but that was because yeah. that person just they didn't see it that way, but you're right. Everyone's different. And uh, <clears throat> so, okay. So second office and now, so we get into that. We get into, unfortunately, uh, Pat Howard, the original Larry Rivera um, had a falling out with Rob. Uh, it was about not leaving on time one night when he mm -hmm. all, already gave him ample uh, warning that he needed yeah. to leave. Yeah, and there yeah. was, there was there, yeah, there was already some tension and some buildup leading up to that even. Oh you know? yeah, I remember. I remember it was always contentious. I remember hearing um 
yeah, I mean, no one, no one's happy. And and you know, looking at it, you know, hindsight being 2020, if I'm gonna look at it for you know, like with you know my as an adult looking at it now, you know, it's it's disrespectful of someone's time, and right. that's something that was happening, you know, regularly for what for whatever reason. Um, you know, I know that you guys, I would hear about how late you guys would stay. And it never made any sense. And then, obviously, I ended up having to go through the same thing. Yeah, and it yeah. never made any sense then either. It didn't make uh, any sense, no. But, you know, it was what it was. And, and I understand. I do understand uh, uh, Larry getting Larry's anger and his position. And I would say um, uh, I can't say that in the same position I wouldn't have done the same thing because – from from and I'm not passing judgment on anyone, but it does come off as if you're just going to look at it from you know with with without any judgment, it is it does seem kind of disrespectful of someone's time. Especially, I remember, yeah. I remember uh, Larry had been um, saying it, it was a thing about a show or something, and he had been he had given notice and and like everything because I remember being there. We had totally expected like. Yeah, I think everybody was in on the whole thing about you guys were going to leave early that day, and we were actually making fun of you guys. Like, oh, they finally get to leave early. Right, you know, like, right. Like, just, we just assumed, yeah. you know, it was there was like everybody. I mean, if if I knew that you guys had to leave early because Larry had a gig, then I like why didn't it happen? Is is, uh, is I mean, uh, I look back on all that, and 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 my estimation, especially now in hindsight, like you said. Um, it was a power play. That yeah, was, it makes sense. That totally makes sense. Like, tell you what to do. No, don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Right, right. And and I I kind of felt that even going into it, especially when we got done with the uh, where we were doing the television Wednesday nights, and we go in, we do the uh, call the matches. If we didn't call them live, you and I actually, I talked to Larry about this. You and I called more of them live than I did with with uh, Pat. This is true. We yeah, actually got to true. He was actually, he brought up on his episode, man, I wish we got to do more of those live. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And then I was starting to talk, well, we did a lot of them live, but then I'm like, oh, well, that was no, most of those were with Gabriel though. Yeah. So, which was cool. But, um, so, okay. We go into TV and we do the matches and then we go into the studio warehouse to do the wraparounds with us on camera. And then once we got out of the uh, studio that night Webb was actually ready to go that night because of what pat said <coughs> larry and then um we go into the studio and nothing's set up and yeah. i knew it, man i just knew it i, I don't know what was going to happen but i knew it wasn't going to be good and sure enough man it was like again larry pat he was um he was already there was some tension already brewing uh prior to that week but that was just the straw that broke the camel's back brother that was yeah, no, it i remember and, <clears throat> I, I remember I remember like the the tension was palpable especially because everybody like I said we were kind of you know joking around and and uh, the people in the office and everything and then and then like it went from a joke to being serious when that that timeline came and it hadn't been and then we're like oh shit what's gonna happen and then we yeah it was tense it was tense and then oh, and, and and like everyone was like is he gonna stay what's gonna happen what's gonna everyone's just wondering why they're not shooting yet and yeah I was in the I was in the I was in the parking lot. I don't remember what I was doing in the parking lot. I remember I was in the parking lot when when Larry stormed out. Yeah. And and he was, you know, he was obviously to put it mildly, he was not happy. Right. And he was he was he left in a very, very, very bad way. He was gone. And and yeah, and that was it. And then it was just kind of like this, oh shit. Everybody, that was that was the, the, the mood was like, oh. What yeah, now? Yeah, what now? And 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 <clears throat> I I want to say I I don't recall what happened. Like why I don't remember if we were told everyone was told to stick around, or if we just kind of stuck around just because we were. I think you guys. I don't. It. I don't think anybody was asked to stick around. I think it was that more. What's going to happen now? Like we. I think, well, it, it, me. I'm naturally nosy, so I know I stayed by to see what was gonna happen. I'm like that. I'm like that meme with the popcorn, like mm, what's next. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I was sticking around to see what what was going to happen, just because I'm naturally nosy that way, and I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to get on the on the gossip uh, before anybody else. Good thing, good thing you were, man. And and good I remember, thing you were nosy. And and yeah, and I remember, you know, we're we're there, whatever happened, and then I don't remember how it happened, but then like Kevin came out and got me and said, "Come here," and I. Uh, you know the, the 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 literally the TV. Me, he said, "You come here." So I go in, and and he he pitches me this idea. And his idea, the way he pitched it to me was, "You're going to be the fake Larry Rivera, and this is what we want to do. We want you to be the fake Larry Rivera. Um, okay. Nobody's going to know on camera. Nobody's going to know that you're not Larry Rivera except Chris." Chris knows that you're not Larry, and that's gonna be that's gonna be the joke. That's gonna be the gag. Chris knows you're not Larry, but to everybody else, nobody knows. And like one of the running gags, I think I, they may have done it once or twice. Was you know the they all look alike, so how could you tell? Kind of you know that joke. Um, yeah. <laughs> very on brand. Very on brand for XPW. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That type of thinking came out of that office. Well, I may be mistaken. We may have to go oh. back and look at the tape. <laughs> Um, so that was the joke. And I think, I think the joke worked fairly well. I think you, you did, you did an amazing job with, with the joke and, and everybody else playing it straight. If I recall, if I recall, like even Rob had one interaction where it was like, what are you talking about? That's Larry. And Kevin probably, yeah. what are you talking about? Right. And the, you were the only right. one, you're no Larry. And there was, yeah. it was. But you did an amazing job. Who are you? Yeah, and yeah, that was that was hilarious. We had a couple of nights where, where uh, yeah, um, you oh, were we just had, you we were too three. funny, and I yeah. couldn't fucking excuse me, I couldn't not stop laughing because of you. Yeah, um, we, we had, and I had those with Larry too. But we really, because you and I, like I said in the beginning, bro, we 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 hit it off. And you're right. It probably did really all stem and start from the Chatsworth Learning Tree class. Um, but but we we hung out a lot. We, we got bites to eat, went out, clubbed and all that. And um, I probably hung out with you. I was saying more uh, when the camera was off than I did with Pat. Pat and I were cool, but we just we just lived. You know, we didn't hang out like like you and I did. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, man. So you add that to the mix of us already having fun, having a good time. And now we got to, we got to try not to laugh with some of these. Yeah. Friends, uh, yeah, that definitely happened. <laughs> yeah, that definitely happened. Um, oh, dude. But, but to, I want to, I want to, I want to kind of focus on, on, on that decision though. Yeah. Um, it's not a decision I took lightly. Right. I, I didn't want to step into somebody else's shoes. Um, and and when I did do it, um, um, I I absolutely absolutely made every effort to not um, insult him or or play it as 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 being the joke. Right. Um, I just wanted to as as weird as it sounds, I just wanted to be the as, as good a him. Right. As as I could be because I was just playing the character that I was told to play, and that yeah. character was that I was the fake Larry, and and you knew I was the fake Larry, but nobody, and even though I was the fake Larry, nobody else could tell because we all look alike, and so that was the gimmick. Oh, wait a I minute. Was so wait a minute. So how come I know the difference then? <laughs> that was that was the gag. That was the gag. Which, which, Chris, right, right. because of your uh, your astute uh, journalistic integrity, right. yeah. sir. <laughs> right. well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more fair-minded. I can see. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but but again, that decision did, did not come lightly, and, and I did not want to come off in a way that would be insulting mm -hmm. to Larry in any in any way, shape, or form, and okay. so. It took me a minute, and 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 Kevin told me. I mean, he told me the whole thing and said, "Look, we're gonna, we're gonna do this now, and then later on, you we're gonna, you know, build it up, and then at this event, you're gonna come out as, you know, the gimmick, fantastical, right. and then 
and we're going to get there. We just need you to be Larry for this amount of time, right. and then it's going to be the fantastic gimmick that that we had kind of talked about briefly. Um, and I think um, part of the reason part of the reason I agreed to it was because um, in XPW, I feel like I had so many missed opportunities. Now I don't know how many how many you know, from official channels, but when I first got there, and I can't remember who it was, it was one of like Kevin's assistants or somebody that was that worked in the office with them had said, Oh, they, they want you to do a gay guy. Will you do a gay guy? I was like, Yeah, I'll do a gay guy, no problem. And I started thinking of of gimmicks for a gay guy and things. And I had even talked to D at the time, and D had told me about his gimmick that he had thought of for, for a gay guy, and we kind of talked about that and then mm -hmm. and then angel came in and they're like oh no there's our gay guy right there yeah. and so, well hey i don't blame you that's okay no problem there and then um someone had mentioned a like a santeria type gimmick where they thought about me being kind of like a, a voodoo guy kind of like a la a la I'll, papa yeah. kind of thing but with you know with the latin santeria twist yeah. to it and then that never materialized and then, um, then the last when we when we went to the to the new office in North in North Hollywood office, the idea was we were going. They wanted they wanted um, uh, uh, like uh, Middle Eastern guys. They wanted terrorists. Okay. They wanted terrorists to do the gimmick, and they 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 asked me if if I was down to do the terrorists, and they asked myself, and they wanted a tag team. They asked me and, and Mongo uh, another oh. Mongo Santino. Um, one of Mongo and let me just say this: Mongo Santino, probably one of the best wrestlers the world never got to see. Right, right. one of the best wrestlers the world never got to see, and it's unfortunate because he he was really good, and yeah. um, he was he he was. So I, I had the privilege of working with him. We did a couple, you know, indie shows and, and carnival mm -hmm. shows and, and stuff like that all over SoCal and Montebello and places. And he, he was mm -hmm. he was my favorite person to work with and he was he was absolutely fantastic and 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 a good gimmick and a good look every i mean just everything solid consummate pro uh which you know goes you know obviously by the success of tantino brothers uh he he founded that and you know him and chaos and uh, but he it was definitely uh his brainchild and and they're they're doing amazing things over at Santino Brothers, but yeah, Mongo Santino. So it was supposed to be myself and Mongo, and I, I even got into the gimmick, and I started learning uh, Persian. I started learning Hebrew. I started learning Farsi. some kind of Middle Farsi. East, Farsi. Farsi, yeah. whatever it was. I think it was actually Pakistani, because I worked with some guys that were Pakistani and was asking them, hey, how do I say this? And they would tell me, in a little wa, in a lehi, Raja on, Alu Akbar. It's still there. Um, ah. I, I, learned these, I learned these phrases, and and I remember, uh, I remember one of the very few interactions I had with Robert Black. He liked the idea, and so I developed like a little promo I would shoot to him, like for the idea uh, to show we were on board. And I remember like something like uh, Robert Black, <laughs> you like to take our women of our descent and use them in your perverse ways. And you know, and something like that, and, <clears throat> and and we were ready to go, and we were working on on tag team moves, and and I recall being told, I think if not by Rob, then by Kevin, like it would be like a, a good push, and it was something they wanted to do, and then nine eleven happened. <clears throat> yep, yeah. and nine eleven happens, and then uh, we came, we came, we came to work out. And the question was posed, like, do you guys still want to do this? And we thought about it long and hard that one night, and we talked to each other. And I know Mongo was down. He was down to go. So I, I'll take the blame, and it was my decision. And I, ultimately, I decided it wasn't a good idea. Yeah. And it was a, it was a mix of, of patriotism, because <clears throat> this was literally on the day. Right. You know, we made that decision and, and and it was a mix of patriotism but also when we were when I thought it through I didn't I I just wasn't so confident that XPW security yeah uh, would be able to handle right right our personal safety should yeah. somebody you know buy the gimmick a little too well so 
ultimately we and also to and also too you got to remember like if you're telling people right now especially younger people that are in wrestling you would you would look at that in retrospect and say what do you mean you decided not to do it after 9/11 <laughs> that was like the perfect time to do it but mm-hmm. but but that's in retrospect but in that moment along with the patriotism that you 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 mentioned look dude there people people died and people were killed. It started a war. So it's looked at as very insensitive for a wrestling company to create a gimmick, which which would appear to be based on this horrific event and there where people died. So and we were all feeling it back then, too, big time, like, God damn, this sucks. I can't believe, whoa, we're under attack. Whoa, look at all the people that died. So there was a lot that way you would just like be turned off by that. But 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 in again, in a business standpoint, on paper, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you do it? It's right. easy to look back on that. Yeah. So, so bringing that back to the, the 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 Larry decision. So when I said no to the gimmick of the terrorists on nine eleven, um, I felt like uh, it felt like management was not happy with that decision. And I don't know if, um, I mean, you know, management. The decision decision for you guys not to go forward with that angle. Right. And I don't know if they didn't pursue it with other, (laughs) other wrestlers. I mean, I think maybe we just fit that look, especially Mongol could, could, could definitely have the look and I could pull the look off, you know, brown skin. Well, man, they now now they really all do look the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that being that happened, and then so then I felt like I kind of, you know, I I like uh, ruined my chances mm. at a shot. So right. there we are now. Moving forward, we're still going to work out and everything. Um, here I am. I had told the boss no for a gimmick that I know he really liked. And, and so, you know, time goes by, time goes by and you feel like you don't want to miss your opportunity. And so when this thing happened with Larry, I felt part of my, part of that decision was like, well, if I say no now again, right now, I might not get my shot again ever. Plus they're telling me <clears throat> it's got an expiration date and I will get to do this other gimmick. Hmm. And so that being, all but in all, in all fairness, again, right off the heels of 9-11, it's easy to say it now, but at the time, like, who knows how long this is going to go on for at that time. Right. You know, like, maybe we won't be able to do this gimmick until like two, three, four, five years from now. Who knows? Right. But yeah, yeah, please. So, yeah. So that being said, when the Larry thing came out, I mean, it was, it was, it was a hard decision, but ultimately, like I said, the fact that I thought... You know, if I say no again, I probably won't get another shot here. Yeah. And and then also they're telling me it's 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 I'm not so much I'm not making fun of the guy. I'm doing it with an expiration date, so to speak. And then at the end of this, I get to you know have this big reveal or turnout or whatever you want to call it. So I begrudgingly said yes. And I'll be honest, uh, I was happy to work with you. I was, that was obviously one of the, one of the, the pros in, in, in the whole thing was, was I got to work with you. Yeah. And, and also, and also thank you, but, and also doing, being in that position, who's going to say no to it. You're, 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 you're the, you're one of the main, I mean, you're one of two of the main voices of the company and you're going to be featured basically on every match. Right. You know? I mean, and and your face is all over TV, all this and that. Uh, you you have a love for the business that goes beyond that. I know from knowing you, the fame and you know a lot of people just get into wrestling. They don't even care about wrestling. They just want a TV, right? You know. Yeah. But 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 either way, you're right. How do you say no to that? And news to me, what you just mentioned, and to the fans, is that. I'm going to say no again. And that's, that just hit me right now. Like hearing you say this, it's like you, you have to say yes for multiple reasons now. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I felt. I didn't, I didn't really didn't want to, I, I, 
I really felt like if I say no again, then I might as well just leave. And, and uh, you know, like, like I said, I mean, yeah, and anybody would have jumped at the chance to be co-host. I think where the, where the hesitation came in was like they were asking me to be someone else right. as the co-host. Right. I was not that I had my, I never had like whatever my quote unquote gimmick was going to be. Heck, Quantastico wasn't even my idea. I, you know, if it were up to me, if I had my choice, I would you know, wrestle under a mask. I would be, you know, Mr. X. I would be very ill in a mask. I'd love right. to be enhancement talent under, I would love to do, I'd be, you know, assassin number seven. Yeah. I just like being in a mask. And that was my, that's how I grew up. I, I love being the little guy in the mask. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, the, again, the hesitation came in is like, you're, you're, you want me to do another dude's character. Yeah. Like I get it. And I mean, I, I, I get what you're asking me to do. I don't, I mean, it wasn't, you know what, if they'd have said you're the new Larry Rivera period, and there was no end to it or no, like you're just now Larry Rivera. I think I probably, I have to say, I probably would have said no at that point. You're just saying like, no, like they're just going to take this thing that, that, that Larry, uh, uh, Pat, that Pat created and it's his, you know, persona or character, whatever it is. And they're just going to say, no, now it's yours at XPW because he left. I would not have, I would not have taken that. So that, yeah, that's kind of messed up. So that's interesting because when I talked to Pat, it was like, yeah, I mean, his inspiration came from uh, the late great Victor Rivera, you know, and, and he created that. Now, and, and we also mentioned, again, talking about you, talking about Pat and, and uh, the, the, the whole mesh of how this happened, that it was not your decision. This was clearly 100 percent upper management decision, how this was going to play out on television. And so if you think about it and you know that the tension was going and the power play and the, and the bad blood at the time, uh, you were probably thrust into something that was personal between other people, whether it was Rob, whether it was who else, you, you know, they could like, well, we're going to take this Larry Rivera from that guy that we're pissed off at right now. We're going to take it, but it just happened to be you that was playing it for the benefit probably. And I'm, and I'm, this is me shooting off the hip, but I've, I was there. I, I can kind of feel what was going on. And I will say that at least part of it, I believe had to do with uh, this is my power play, but you Gabriel are going to be the person that is going to play this out for me and my power play and against Pat at the time. Cause there was, there was heat uh, from the office from Pat leaving, even though Pat was justified still, there was, what are we all to do? We all have to, it's, it's, it's the old saying in wrestling, you got to move on now and you're part of this company. Even if another wrestler or whoever leaves, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, uh, you're absolutely right, and and you know, I can't, I can't state enough. You're absolutely right. Obviously, there was heat there. Um, whatever intent was there from the perspective of why they wanted to continue the 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 fake Larry thing was it was it specifically an affront to 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 Pat? Uh, I have no way of, of knowing for sure one way or the other, but there's definitely a, a argument to be made that, yep, that's why they did it. And again, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy decision, but I think I tempered agreeing to do it uh, with the fact that it was presented to me as a temporary you right. know, bag moving forward. And I remember they told me like, you remember the Jeffersons yeah. when they cast uh, the son, Lionel, was a totally different actor, and he looked totally different. But nobody, nobody was the wiser. I'm like, yeah, I watched the Jeffersons. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the idea. But Chris is gonna know, and la la la. And they pitched it to him. He's like, oh, oh, you know. And then you know, in person, you're like, yeah, okay. Can I think about it? And like, damn, babe, this is what I'm. This is my choice. This yeah. is my choice. And it and, all happened. And it all happened so quick because. Oh yeah, it, it was all that at night. Yeah, because we were we were not only did it happen right away, it happened right away when we had to record and tape a show. 
Which is exactly we shot the the first the first time you and I worked together was that, that, was that time. and we had to, I remember it was it was tough because we had to get up and do the thing and be smiley and laugh laughing and and yeah. you had to be Chris and you had to be the hey Rof and the whole thing and you had to be on and I know I didn't want to be on I was sort of like can we shoot tomorrow can we like no we got to do it now we got to do it now it was like now. oh so it was kind of like which was interesting. Which is interesting because on that first episode that you were on, the matches were called by Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not remember that. That's well, hilarious. That's what, but that's what we did. Yeah. We called, yeah, we called yeah. the matches. Yeah, because Webb was always ready to go. Yeah, because he, yeah, and he, and we already did that before yeah. he left. Uh, he left after we already called the matches. Right. So in a way, if you think about it, that puts it over even more that you're really this uh, Rivera because you yeah. sound just like him calling the matches. But but um, but either way, um, yeah, we had to rush it. We had to do it quick. And actually, that first episode that you were on, I think, because Webb would always put like funny little catchphrases underneath us. Usually, it was like to dog us, right? <laughs> but but. Um, but <laughs> But but the, I, I'm sure it was the first one that said uh, Jefferson's, Three's Company, and Bewitched and XPW TV. What do they have in common? And it was it was like <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you yeah. go. That's hilarious. His his yeah. uh, Webb's knowledge of of pop culture uh, uh, oh, impressed yeah, yeah. yet again. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he was a good one to have. I will admit for all that stuff that that he was able to think of on the fly and just kind of you think outside the box in, in his own kind of unique. Oh way. my God. Let me tell yeah. you something. Look, I never thought I would be a color commentator or anything like that. And, and I, I deferred to you and, and, and played off for you. You were, you were, dude, okay. you were driving, you were running that show because you were the master at that. I just had to, I had to just go with you. I played off you. Cause I, I was nervous each and every time because First of all, I'm doing a I'm doing a, a, a character that I'm not used to doing other than yeah. as a joke in the hallways like oh yeah gee, well, that was it, you know. And and now I'm I have to do the whole shtick which I was you know never really comfortable with. But uh, so I'm deferring to you for everything. And Webb was, uh, God, talk about a safety net, a lifesaver. Uh, he he really, I mean, I remember we'd be doing something. He'd like. You know, cue the tape, pause the tape, and be like, "Hey, maybe you should uh, uh, say something about this." Whether it was a, a technical thing or even a joke, yeah, and right. always, 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 yeah. On and 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 they would they would assist us at times uh, when we didn't. Again, when we weren't calling the action live. Oh yeah, because when we because I want to say I want to say most of the most of the events that we did together ended up being live because we did live at the Olympic, we did live at Pico Rivera, and 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 I'm I was watching some stuff recently and I'm like, I think most of those shows we did ended up being live you and I because at that point in time just so just the timing of it, like right after Pat left and you came in was different production technological advancements were coming to play that we were fooling around with. And that was just happened to be one of them is setting it up ringside, which Pat was right, dude. Like you, there is a little bit more oomph and excitement because um, you, you almost have to turn yourself up when we're doing it in the edit bay, you know, yeah. Which, yeah. which was no problem, which right. was no problem at all. But, but when you're doing it live, you're just naturally, yeah. This is the biggest thing to ever happen in the history of the world, fans. Exactly. And you're feeding the audiences, you know, uh, either behind you or in front of you, beneath you, whatever. You're there live, just like them, and you're feeding off that live energy. Do you remember? Do you remember uh, Chico at the time at the? Uh, and I don't know if you were Larry yet or Wantastico yet, but do you remember when the the fans and we were sitting right at ringside? Not against the ring, but like they have on Raw, like we were back behind the the up against the security railing, and the fans start throwing chairs, dude. At that Pico. was at the Pico, yeah, Pico, yeah. Oh, I remember. Man, and then I like remember. one chair just lands, boom, right here, and then like, and then we just like it was like an earthquake drill at school, like <laughs> duck and cover, dude. 
Uh, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Do you do yeah. you think that you? Okay, so because I want to get into a little bit later on when you started wrestling, but you did that as a tag team competitor. Mm -hmm. with, oh my goodness, you and Pogo the Clown! What a what a team! What an odd pairing! But it worked in a, in an in a in its own unique way. It, it it worked, man. The the big guy, the little guy, two totally separate walks of life. What the hell do you have to do with John Wayne Gacy? Wantastico, right? But um, wow, flipping thing, <laughs> right? But 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 before we get into that, how was your overall experience on commentary? And did that? In one way or the other down the road, did that kind of help you in any way when you did get in the ring? Um, let's see. My, my overall experience was was um, as far as being, uh, you know, being able to uh, work with you uh, and Webb was fantastic. We had really good times. Uh, there were times, obviously, when the camera was rolling um, during that time when we were shooting. Even if it was, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, with uh, Kevin behind the camera, we'd we'd have, you know, giggle fits and and whatnot. And we had good times. I remember, um, I remember that one time, and 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 to his credit, Webb Webb left it. He put it at the end of the sh of the of the episode where we were having one of those nights. It was just a just a long night, and either I don't remember if it was the script that was just hard to get through. Something about that night was hard to get through and and so we just needed a coach. and so you do a masterful i don't know if the the uh, audience if the if the xpw fans know this you do a masterful vince mcmahon and you do a, a dead on dead on vince mcmahon and a dead on finkel <laughs> howard finkel and i did not know this i had no idea and we we're doing we're, we're trying to shoot the show and for for whatever reason say, it's, not it's not going it's like cut here we're flubbing lines i don't know what it is but we can't get through the script to save our lives and so we just kind of like we're like you know what shake it off whatever and you just started going off you start doing your vince and kevin starts recording yeah well you go off on a good i don't know if it's like a minute or two but it's 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 a substantial amount of tv time and Kevin's recording because we're just like, well, we're like, we don't even know what to do anymore. So he records it. We get it out of our system, and, and then we go, we finish the show. Great. Watching the show at the end of the show, at, at the end credits or whatever, Webb put it in the show. I know, you know, man. Total, you know, total, you know what, like, uh, there's no caveman, there's nothing. It's just you doing <laughs> a bit. And me, totally out of, I'm not doing Larry or whoever. I'm speaking regularly. Like, like this. What is, what is this guy doing? I'm like, exactly. I'm just like, and I'm totally out of character because I'm, I'm it, you know, and it's it's probably, yeah, it's my favorite memory. My favorite memory. Of, I, got, of, I, was, I, was, I was actually upset at the time. I was, I mean, I thought it was funny, of course. But like you said, the whole kayfabe at the time. What are they doing? Oh no! You know all that. Yeah. I mean, I can laugh now. Of course, I appreciate yeah. that. But I remember at the time taking that seriously, but also loving it at the same time. My mind was going two different directions, man. You know. Did you was, before, before we go from from you transitioning um, to Wantasico? Uh, let me ask you this, Gabriel. Was there was there any like serious backlash? Uh, that came your way for for doing that for doing fake Larry or did we kind of cover that pretty much? Um, I, I honestly, you know, I don't know if there was any um, real backlash towards me. Like I didn't, I, I, you know, I, I was self-absorbed, self-involved, selfish. I didn't really, I didn't really, I didn't really pay attention to it. Um, Right. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm not trying to say that like as a good thing. It's definitely yeah. a negative. I really just, I was, I was, you know, hey, look, you know, you're doing your thing, man. I was just doing my thing. So if, if there was any negative backlash, I just kind of took it. I mean, the attitude is, I mean, in wrestling, if you're, if you're, it, and, and 
it, it doesn't really apply to XPW because of 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 what it was and and how it how it you know, uh, transcended everything that we knew yeah. of wrestling, like with heels and faces. It you know like I don't know. So um, it just it just you couldn't. If you're gonna be a heel, be a heel, no matter what the crowd thinks. If you're gonna be a babyface, you gotta be a babyface, no matter what the crowd thinks. Well, so that was just kind of my attitude. I'm doing this now, and my focus was just to get through to it so that I can wrestle. Right. So my, I looked at it as kind of like I am. I'm putting in my work now so that I can get in the ring. I'm putting in my work now so that I can get in the ring, and and I never, it never. To tell you the truth, when I was doing the Larry, it never even occurred to me what if I was going to continue to do commentary, and yeah. if I was to continue to do commentary, what was that going to sound like? I, it didn't even cross my mind. Right. I just wanted to get in the ring. I was just so and excited yeah, to get in the ring. You were eager to wrestle inside the XPW ring, uh, finally, right? From all the days of Slammers, from all that. Was it? Was it a, before we get into that? Because once we once it was dropped, the Larry Rivera character, the birth of Juan Tastico, refrigerator magnets and all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you had to bring up the magnets. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I mean, everybody bust your balls on that. Hey, I know, you, still got those, uh, you still got yours, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, and then and then Webb, like, oh, superstar over here. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, there's a whole story behind those magnets too. Wow. Okay, but 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 the question is: so once you got into Wantastico, because that when you became more, I think you were able to from from the from Gabriel bring out a, and create a character at that point, as opposed to Rivera. That's what I thought. Um, but you still actually you don't get I think enough credit in a way. No joke that even when you were doing Rivera, you still did it in your own creative way. I know people. It's hard for people to understand that, but it. I. I. I thought that. But um, to you though, what was was that before you got into wrestling, and and you you we were still doing the TV show Rivera Rivera Rivera. Okay, now Juan Tesco Juan Tesco Juan Tesco. When you dropped the accent, dropped Rivera. Was that any relief to you at all? Um. Yes. Definitely. Okay. There. There was relief because I didn't. I wasn't. It was like moving away from that 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 you know chapter, and that's kind of like what I wanted to do from the beginning. Because again, you you go back to how it happened in the first place, and it was all negative. You know, it was it wasn't it wasn't like, I mean, it would have been different to start a new to put a a, a brand new. You know, it's kind of like you put in. Um, you take Bobby Heenan out and put in Jesse the Body Ventura. You don't put in Jesse the Body Ventura pretending to be Bobby Heenan. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. there was an opportunity and anybody could have done it, but they went the way they did. And I, you know, um, I mean, we were, we were so, they were so blinded. Uh, and again, if this was because of which I think it, and, and, and at least small part at the very least because of personal stuff going on, but that just blinded us. I mean, did we not learn from fake diesel from fake razor Ramon? Uh, like what, uh, what is, how is fake Larry Rivera going to be any different? Uh, you know, I think they went in. I think they, I think the they wanted the 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 gag. I think they thought the gag was was gonna put it over. And I think, and I'll be honest with you, I think your professionalism and how good you are at what you were doing then, I think there was a lot. They were investing in you to put that over because, again, when it was sold to me, that was a big. That was the pitch. Was that you know, Klaus knows that you're not Larry, but nobody else does. And right. it's like the whole, you know, Jefferson. The, con the concept is funny. The concept so, is and, funny. And I think that's what they were, that's what they were banking on. That's what they were, right. that's what they were hoping for. And, right. and to your credit, you did an amazing job with that. And I think that's what put it over and kept it uh, from becoming, kept me from becoming, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, a joke. If it weren't for you, if it weren't for you being so good at what you were doing, I just would have been a joke. I think it would have gone that way. Like, look at this, you know, look at this bleep hole trying to be Larry Rivera. He's no Larry Rivera, you know. Like it could have. I tell you, you were doing what you were doing. 
Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But but we did, man. There were some funny, funny, funny ones that I was watching on YouTube that I haven't seen in years because my VHSs are boxed up somewhere. But um, <laughs> just some good times, man. Of of we were we were really uh, shooting from the hip and improving a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I remember there was like I forget. I got sprayed. I got uh, sprayed, and I had paper towels. And I'm wiping my face off, but like I'm covering my mouth, and I'm wondering about the Enterprise one has to go. If you think that the Veronica Kane's gonna, <laughs> you know, come out at like just just winging it, and, and it was just I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, that was just too much fun, dude. <laughs> too much fun, man. And uh, I remember one right off the bat. Right now that you're saying that, that made me laugh. That had me cracking up. Was you did the whole. We're doing something and you busted out the hole. You're killing me, Larry. You're oh yeah, yeah. You're killing. Me. Where have I heard that before? Anyway, <laughs> like that. I was just like, oh, that was too much. It was, yeah. It was, it was. But again, it was you that kept it from me just being a bad impersonator. It was, it was you being good at what you were doing oh, that man. kept that going. Otherwise, if you, if you, if you didn't sell that, then I'm just a dick pretending to be somebody else's gimmick. It was it was good having you there, man. And and when you left, and like I told Pat too, it sucked when when either one of you guys left because it was a, one. It's a lot harder job to call a match by yourself. Right. Uh, a lot of respect for the Bob Coddles, the Bill Mercers, the um, um, Lance Russells, and all that. Right. But um, but um, uh, when you okay, so you when you became finally your one Tastico. And I remember, like, I would I would search the city high and low. I'd go on the metro. I'd go uh, driving. Like, Where is Juan Tassico? And you came out of the strip club with some. No, nope, these are just some friends I'm hanging out with. Yeah, these are friends. Um, yes, he's my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and so I like that character. I like Juan Tassico. and uh, and he had he had some legs to stand on. Um, you you were you more comfortable? I mean, obviously, the, the I mean for other reasons, but. From a performance standpoint, were you more comfortable and were you pretty comfortable under the tagline Wantastico? Um, I'd say I was more it's a it's like a double edged sword. I was more comfortable than 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 when I had to do the Larry thing. I was more comfortable being Wantastico, but the Wantastico gimmick wasn't my gimmick. It wasn't mine to I never, I never bought into it because of, of personal reasons. I was in a, I was in a, I was in a bad relationship, and so I, I, if I, I couldn't. It was hard to be comfortable in the gimmick because I'd have to, you know, come home and explain to, you know, uh, my, my woman at the time, like that's all for TV. I don't know these women. I know I was in the strip club, but I swear. We were not, it was literally work. I was, the girls will not touch me if I paid them. <laughs> I, think this, I think this happens. I think, and, and after all the years being in wrestling and even acting, it's like, this is so, this is, this story is as old as time. I right. mean, I remember just not even being next to the girls and my girlfriend at the time, uh, we were watching the show and, and uh, of course, Lizzie or, or Jessica, whoever, oh, and then it's like, I remember the first time she heard, yeah, the first, well, it was the first time she heard that or knew that was, a, I'm like, no, 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 that's just a thing. That, <laughs> but it's like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's as old as time. And, and yeah, it just comes to being secure with, in knowing it's entertainment too. Like, right. but, uh, but, um, so, so you were eager now to step inside yeah. the ring and, so how was this now? And when was your first match? And how did it unfold to where, okay, Wantasico, your your role as a color commentator, did it end overnight to refresh my memory? Or or did it kind of transition into less commentary, more wrestling, and then you became a wrestler? And then and then after that, how did it come about you teaming up with Pogo? Well, it all it all happened all at the same time. Okay. Um, because I was quote unquote Larry up until that first at, at genocide. So genocide happens with the, uh, the halfway cage. Yeah. Uh, you and I come out to the ring to open the show. And at that point I'm still quote unquote 
I'm right. still Larry. So we come out and and so we come out, we do the warm up and everything, and we bring out at the time um, Dynamite D, God rest his soul. Um, and the uh, at the time he was doing that gimmick with the SoCal Workers Union, yep. and um, and so uh, I guess the gimmick the the thing was that they were you know lurking around the back, mm-hmm. and uh, we wanted to get rid of them. So and still doing the Larry voice, I you know call them out to the ring, and you're upset with me like what are you doing? These guys don't belong here, and so I call them out to the ring, and I hold this this mock interview. In, in the in the Grand Olympic Auditorium and in, in, in doing my best to honor uh, Larry Vera doing the his his lines of the, the historic building the the legendary yeah. the greats you know how do you think you deserve to wrestle here uh, instead of where you normally wrestle like the swap meets and and I'm not letting them talk and so every time I ask a question I did that old shtick I'm sure we picked it up from 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 WWF or somewhere where I hold the mic and I just pull it away before the answer and I I talk over them. And then uh, at the end, so how does it feel when you're here? How does it feel? And then at the last minute, and I have my hair tucked into a beanie, and you know the, the beanie I would wear. And then, and then uh, I the every question I asked was started with how does it feel? And then and as I hold the mic out to D, my uh, D clocks me, my beanie goes flying, my hair flies out. And D picks up the mic and goes, how does it feel to get your head kicked in? And that's the beginning of the match. And they start stomping on me. And, right. they're, they're that, and then Pogo's music hit and Pogo comes out. Because at the time, Pogo's big. <clears throat> if, if XPW had the face of XPW, the heart and soul of XPW was definitely supreme. Um, but if, if XPW had an enforcer, it was definitely right. Pogo. If you ever um, hear about if you ever hear about like the Undertaker stories in the in the locker room, I'm like that's how Pogo was. Right. And, and and Pogo, like he arguably bled. He he was all in at one point. Oh, yeah. I mean, he put it on his his um. He tatted his, it on his on his chest or his neck or whatever. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then he had it on his um on his uh on his uh, wardrobe, on his ring yeah. gear. Yeah, um, it was his ring gear. And no one told him to do that, you know. So, so no, he was he was all in, and he was just that uh, irresistible force, and and then Supreme was the immovable object, or vice yeah. versa. They were yeah, the two yeah. definitely like like the banner man for sure. Because whenever anybody wanted to start trash with XPW, out came Pogo, oh. and, and yeah. that was that was the the situation here. So they're stomping me, and Pogo comes out, and then uh, he clears the ring. I pick up the mic. And something to the effect of, okay, you you know, you guys want to have a match? I'll give you a match. Pogo versus Larry Rivera. And I think I actually flubbed the line because I said, you get to wrestle a very special opponent. And I said, Larry Rivera. And I should have said, fantastic. That was supposed to be my thing. I should have said, ah. fantastic. But I, I think I messed up the line. I believe I actually say Larry Rivera. I should have said, fantastico. And then that was the beginning of the match. That was my first match. And I was lucky enough. To I got to wrestle D on my first match, and I was I was nervous. I was nervous as hell because we didn't really get to go over too much on the match. Um, two slammers guys, yeah, two slammers yeah. guys. Uh, but we yeah. were in there with uh, with uh, uh, a good, a uh, solid, solid mm-hmm. workers. American American Wild Child, yeah, uh, Ron, Ron. He was a great guy, great guy, Ron, and uh, and the guy that was doing the old. The the whole uh, shady, shady. Game. shady. Oh, he was, shady was, was, was that was great too. That was some that was some good stuff, dude. That, that was, funny. was a fun fun match. Um, yeah. and then and felony, God rest his soul, felony yeah. was the referee, yeah. and felony was the referee. So I was I was uh went comfortable with 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 everybody that was in there, but almost off the bat, um, uh, two things happened. Um, I got hurt. Uh, uh, somebody did a, a, a move, and I guess uh, the bump was supposed to take place in front of me, and I didn't allow for that room to happen too well. Like I didn't have my legs open wide enough, or the guy didn't land dead center. He landed off center and landed on my on my foot, and and just I heard a pop. I felt the pop, and I was done. And so I couldn't, I couldn't put any weight on my on my leg. And that was almost the very, very beginning of the match. Um, so 
uh, what Dean, happened? happened? He just it, uh, there was a, a a spot where I guess he was gonna get, it was a double drop kick or something that happened. He's supposed to uh, fall dead center in front of me, but he landed a little bit off and landed on my ankle. Oh, and I heard man. that pop, and and I just knew right there. I'm like, oh, that's it. And I was like, okay, well, we're gonna get through this somehow. Pogo, pogo. <laughs> And and um and I mean I already had the the thought in mind. Pogo's the powerhouse. I'm the little guy. We gotta play it up that way. I can't be in here body slamming and clotheslining everybody. That's his job. Let him do the heavy lifting. And and um and that's how we worked it. That's how we worked it. So that first match, um, I took a lot of bumps, took a lot of took a lot of abuse, and uh, uh, did a little uh, did a little. Came up with a move with D. Um, that he liked, and he was like, yeah, yeah, do that. Um, and you called it a modified breakfast burrito. <laughs> uh, so he, took, he did, D picked me up for a step. Now, remind you, I can't, well, I can't get up. My ankles, I'm done. I can't put any weight on my ankle. Wow. So D did, I mean, he had to muscle me up, but I got up as best as I could for him. And, for, and he picked me up for a body slam. I, like, shimmy down his back and, like, twisted inside and did, like, a cutter move on him. And you didn't know what to call it, and that's what came out of your mouth. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it until afterwards, and it was oh my god, I cracked up. I think I spit out my drink literally. It was it was pretty funny. Oh, and, yeah. and with well, that, that, I that's, the, that's the that's the chore of calling a match by yourself, man. You gotta <laughs> and 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 you know what? At that at that, and you you'll probably attest to this being in commentary at that time. That was at a time in wrestling when the moves started exploding, like all the different moves. And I, and I, I know, I, 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 I'd like to know all of them, but I, I, over time, man, you get to know all these moves, but then like, I mean, when we grew up watching wrestling, it would have been way easier to call a match uh, than a modified uh, a Samoan drop, uh, Death Valley driver, plancha, uh, tope versus <laughs> body slam. <laughs> elbow stomp you know so, yeah. there's the elbow again yeah right oh <laughs> another a clothesline. elbow line a clothesline there, there it is <laughs> another clothesline with authority <laughs> authority yeah. well you still got to throw that stuff in but but the move explosion i remember like whoa man i remember as an announcer i really kind of studied up even i already knew stuff cuz i i grew up getting some tapes from japan and all that so, um, but yeah, I like Lance Russell, those guys, Bill Mercer, they never had to call those type of moves. Before. Right. No, it was a different, definitely a different era for them. And that, and, that, and that came in with Joey Styles, who, right. who, who right. I know. And, and, uh, and, and uh, so he kind of like, and Mike Tanay, I'll give him, he, he too, you know. Right. But so, so how was it overall? So after that, did you break your ankle or what happened? Did you sprain it really bad? Or? Um, uh, it was it was torn ligaments and okay. wow. I never. Well, yeah, it was torn ligaments. Um, and uh, you know, I found out afterwards. But uh, in the match, so I tag Pogo. He comes in, cleans house, move the match along. So I still have the big spot to finish, where I have to do a moonsault off the top rope. Yeah. And on a bad ankle, so we, he sets it up. Does I I somehow I. I I nailed it. He put the guys out like the third quarter of the ring far away. And I'm just like, all right, well, if I miss it, it'll look good. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do? I, even, I think on video, I think, I think I get down and like try to pull him. Like, I'm not going to move him. So I just climb back up again. And I just go for him. Like, well, if I hit it, I hit it. Oh my and gosh, dude. I got lucky and I hit it. And, and, wow. and uh, yeah, that was, that was the, the first, very first match. And it was, it was, it was great. Felt great. Yeah. Felt great. Right after that, I didn't feel any pain in my ankle. It wasn't until I got home. I was like, "Oh shit, this really hurts." Um, uh, but yeah, I never, I never, because of you know the whole, I wore it as a badge of honor. I, I got it looked at, but I never really uh, took care of it because I wanted to keep working out. So every every Tuesday, even though um, during the week I'd have it wrapped up and take care of it, when the time came to get in the ring, I would just get in the ring because hey, I'm a worker, man. Yeah, ring, bro. And you know yeah. we're going on Tuesdays, hanging out with the boys. And now, now I'm working, so you know I'm. I wanted to be one of the boys, so I never really took the time off. So, so um, where at that point in time did they did they say like, oh, 
with this, that kind of, that felt good with, with uh, Wantastico and Pogo because then you guys did some stuff a little bit, a little bit after that and Pico and all, Pico Rivera and all that. Yeah. We, um, and then he turned on you and then he turned on you because yeah, he, well, you. Yeah. Uh, truth, truth be told, I got to actually wrestle in an XPW ring at an XPW event. I got to do that three times. I only had three matches for okay. XPW. Um, the rest of the time I was doing all the, I was still doing what, what we were doing. Uh, we were shooting, you know, and around that time we were, we were coming up on that um, hundredth episode. If you remember, so you and I were still, even though I had now had my first match, you and I were still doing the shtick and, and having fun with it. And, and Webb was having fun with it and playing with, you know, the, the banner and doing the Quantastico and putting the bling and, and on the, on the smile and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Things to look, I started letting the hair down with the bandana, doing the more Rico yeah. Suave. Uh, keeping the sunglasses on during the wraparounds and whatnot. And so we were really going for that whole Rico Suave yeah. uh, flavor. Yes. But yeah, it was, it was still, even though I had had my first match, it was still, I was still doing, it was still doing more. It was more TV and, and working with you still. Right. Me, right. Because it went from genocide and then my next match was Liberty or Death. And we had to fill in all the gaps. And I remember the ge the whole genocide and the whole TV time. So the first thing that came out was you called that first TV show and that first match alone because I wrestled. But then after that, part of the commentary is me coming back. And yeah. you're like, what the heck was that? And you know, us going back. And, and yeah. the introduction right. of Fantastico actually happens in um, in our uh, calling of the match. Yep. So we're calling the match, and then I in the calling of the match, I introduced myself as Fantastico. Right. And we call the rest of those matches, and you know we do TV and the the DVD and all that, and that's all that went about till till uh, Liberty or Death. Uh, yeah. I wanted to. Okay. Before we before I want to ask you a few things before we wrap up, but one one of which is fast forwarding a few years, Gabriel is why why didn't we see you? At, at, at these um, at, at the reunion shows, Cold Day in Hell, XPW 10, uh, so on and so forth, so so forth. Because I thought a lot of good stuff could have come out of that. I think I remember talking to you at that time, and I really wanted you to be a part of it. But now, was that a decision that you you kind of made on your own, or or what was going on at that time? Well, uh, uh, you're going to have to refresh my memory a little bit, and I'll be able to 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 tell you. Um, as best I can. Which which came first? Uh, well, the first reunion show was Cold Day in Hell in Cold Day in Hell, and that one was around what was that? What two, 2011, 2010? When no, that was that was as early as 2008. Redondo Beach. Okay, so 2008, Redondo Beach. So what happened was, <clears throat> I believe, if okay, so I remember. I actually, I don't know if I spoke to you. Or if it was Angel or somebody, it just so happened at the time I was going to um, <clears throat> medicine school, oh, and right, yeah. the big the big vision offices were like three blocks from the school I was going to. Yeah. So I mean, I, somebody said, "Hey, come on down." Yeah. And so I did, and I believe it was was it Mike Mike Hartsfeld had a lot, a lot to do with that with that show. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't remember all the details and, and, and there's, there's reasons for that. But um, uh, I remember, I remember I was supposed to be a part of that show. And I remember um, something that was worked out was to somehow allow uh, uh, Larry Pat to kind of get his uh, comeuppance on me. Okay, right. Right. And, and, and I thought, I thought that was a, a good idea. I, I wanted to kind of work something out. I think they said like Pat would I like take up some kind of bump for Pat and then I would be in the battle royal or something like that. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. That sounds like a good idea. I started getting, uh, I started working out, getting in shape. And what ended up happening was, um, um, uh, long story short, um, I didn't make it because, and I don't know if I told anybody or, or what happened, but, um, you know, I've struggled with 
uh, drugs and alcohol for a long time in my life. Um, thankfully, I'm sober now. I've been awesome. sober uh, for for uh, seven years. Man, but man. Uh, this is this is you know a, a li lifelong. This was happening uh, while I was at XPW. This was happening, you know, basically, yeah, pretty much my adult life. So, um, you know, just at that time, I was with uh, you. I, I was I was with you for for a portion of that too. <laughs> you and I, uh, yeah, you know, just you know, uh, it's not always bad. You know, yeah. there's not all bad times when you're when you're like that. Just why else would you be doing that? that? Exactly. Yeah. But uh, at that time, when the cold day in hell happened, I, I had every intention of being at that show. And then it was a combination of of uh, that uh, personal problem and yeah. also the same toxic relationship and, and, and bowing down to having the significant other at that time and not have not, you know, keeping the drama. At, was it worth going all the way to Redondo Beach or not? And, yeah. and just. Basically, you know, sabotage on, on that end and also self-sabotage right. for me, you know, at, you know, being being of sound mind, clean and sober, I would have, you know, gotten in shape and, and happily been at the show. Uh, wrestling is is my passion. Wrestling is is, is something that I, I love still to this day. And so, yeah, you know, the only thing that could keep me out of the ring is something as as uh, severe as as right. uh, an addiction and that's basically what happened so i know that that was the story for cold day in hell yeah i remember uh pat this is funny i, I didn't talk i didn't remind him I, I thought of this later but uh i remember at cold day in hell uh one of the fans just kind of being a, a smart ass you know and and just funny he he we came to the ring he's like all right it's good to see you uh chris clausen one tastico good to see you and pat's like jay what shut the <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, a, I'm, I remember when 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 I went by, I was like thinking about that guy in the crowd. Like, oh, that was clever, dude. That was. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have been there. Just like yeah. I said, that's oh, totally. And and it would have been closure. It would have been something interesting too, like uh, like <laughs> like almost like uh, two superheroes, like the the good and the evil. Hulk. You know, coming. I mean, it would have been something interesting like that. Like, uh, and by the way, going back to um, you as a performer, because look, we did the wrestling together. You obviously are a performer. We went to the the Learning Tree Annex in Chatsworth. Like, you, you're you're a performer. So I know it's difficult for people to understand this, but I'll but I'll give you a metaphor right here, which is. Um, to say that you were, you actually brought something, believe it or not, to having to unfortunately copy uh, a character, right? But the same could be said because maybe your talent wasn't seen because of that. No different than Glenn Jacobs. Because Glenn Jacobs was fake diesel. And no one, no one was ever going to see what talent that guy had under that gimmick. But now... We know years later that obviously the guy had talent. He was a super talent, right? And and even as far as that guy got, and rightfully so in the business, he never would have it never would have been seen under the uh, uh, under the, um, the the gimmick of fake Diesel. So unless you had guys that were working right next to him, so that's why I can attest to even when you were doing fake Rivera, like, no, nah, this guy's, there's something funny here. I mean, even though he's doing this, it, it, we're, we're doing our shtick and we're clicking, you know? And so definitely want to put that over. Uh, uh, that. Thank of you. Course. Thank you. Appreciate it's, it. It's, it's true, dude. But brother, before we wrap up, let me, let me ask you this, dude. Um, and then you can plug, to, uh, say hello to anybody you want. Shout outs. You, you, and thank you, by the way, you shared a little bit there with, um, Supreme with Dynamite D. Uh, we lost Q, the West Siders, uh, Felony you mentioned, a uh, whole host of guys. So anybody else you want to give tribute to. But um, what was your opinion? You're, you're obviously like me, man. We always got along because we, we were wrestling fans and we were similar, right? And age and everything. Um, but um, what was your opinion from, let's say, from Gabriel's perception and then you can talk about from the perception of one Tastico. But what was your perception and your opinion of XPW as a fan? And what do you think now 
in the whole scope of professional wrestling, where, where is the legacy in your mind as a fan, really, of XPW? Um, as, as, uh, as myself, as a fan, um, you know, it, it, it was, it was, man, hmm. organized, organized chaos and a perfect storm at, at, at just that right time. And, and, and also maybe you could also say that it was uh before it's time hmm. because imagine xpw breaking out um now yeah that happening now would would take i think it'd give everybody a run for its money if it were happening now um it'd be something to see now um, then, um, for me personally, it was uh, not taking away anything from the guys that did did all that hardcore stuff. That that's that takes a, that's a uh, that's another level of of of, of uh, professionalism and 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 love for this sport. Um, I always wanted to do it at least the one time. I wanted to do it the one time, and I wanted to do it right. Um, uh, just it just never it never came to fruition. Um, Why do you say that? Because because uh, because of the longevity. Because I mean, you 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 like everybody else. You, you're not going to go when way way down the road. It's one of those things where like I'll I'll never go to my grave wondering because you did it. Yeah, well, um, I I wanted to have at one I I wanted it to be done right, meaning like it, it, in in the culmination of a of a of a feud where where I got to do the one hardcore deathmatch type. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I didn't know you were referring to deathmatch. I thought you were just meant in general pro wrestling. Okay. Uh, well, in general pro wrestling, I I feel like I never. Because of all the the, the, the personal issues, I, oh, I never really got to say, I never got my my uh, my goodbye. Okay, you got it. I mean? And and I I still consider myself unretired because I never got to say goodbye in the ring, and and I'm still looking for that that goodbye. Whether it's you know finding somewhere some wrestling gym somewhere that I can go, you know, work out at. All right, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the ring, man. <laughs> but just you know, you know, either you know, taking taking some bumps and and saying you know, letting my body tell me like, yeah, dude, that's yeah. it. Or 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 if if the bug bites again, like, hey, then just keep working out till the bug doesn't bite anymore. Till I can honestly, say, you know, I'm good. I ran yeah. the ropes and I'm I'm good. You know, yeah. but I don't know. I won't know because right now I still have that that <laughs> fire. Maybe not burning bright but the problem is that it's still burning right. so i really like if if it were up to me i'd you know put up put up a ring in the front yard and, and go roll around but it's it those things like that are beyond my control so if i could find a place uh somewhere nearby that has a wrestling ring up and you know ready to use some uh, field of dreams situation where i could yeah. just poke through and and you know roll around and take a few bumps and see what happens you know, where's slammers when you need it, right? Yeah, I would. I, I, that's funny, man. I would love to see a Field of Dreams type movie made for wrestling. Dude, that's, that's a good concept, actually. Um, so okay, well, I mean, that basically answered. And did you? What do you think the legacy will be? Um, uh, I, it, of XPW. Uh, you know, uh, uh, first of all, just they they. <laughs> They many firsts, you know. They 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 did things that that they, you know, XPW kind of kicked. We, 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 we XPW, yeah. we 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 did things that. Um, first of all, the wrestling world, the wrestling industry, did everything they could to close the door on us. They didn't want us yeah. in the yeah. same metaphorical room. I try not to be. I try, I try to be unbiased. Sorry to cut you off. I try to be unbiased as, as possible, 
uh, because of being in, involved with XPW and even doing the show. But really, that you can't argue that we were definitely the black sheep in the wrestling world, and it, we had to fight to get uh, coverage. I mean, there were some photographers that came, and and we were actually more paid attention to by foreign photographers. By oh, absolutely, absolutely. I remember the foreign press. I remember yeah. uh, international mm -hmm. press was was huge for us. Right. Uh, the DVD thing. So so we you know XPW did things that made it. Uh, impossible for us to be ignored. Right, right, right. As much as Vince, you know, for all these, for you know what, all these guys that 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 were, you know, the homegrown SoCal talent. Believe it or not, you know what? I honestly believe Vince McMahon saw you guys wrestle. Vince McMahon saw us wrestle because we had DVDs on the shelves before he did. <laughs> yeah, we we were actually the first. That's a good point. I don't think we've ever talked about this on Extreme Memories that. Maybe brought it up with Kevin on the on episode one, but uh, XPW boys and girls, believe it or not, we, and and um, and the days of DVDs, and even before that VHS, because when we launched XPW, WCW, WWF, E, they were still only on VHS in the in the mm -hmm. early, or, uh, mid or, mid to late nineties. And because we were associated and, and the parent company was Extreme Associates Adult Film Company, they were already doing, they were getting into Blu-ray at when it just launched, uh, before it launched, talking about getting into Blu-ray. So, so we already had all those, uh, it was, look, dude, yes, it's adult film, but it was still like, it was still a production, a movie studio. And, yeah. and we had all those, from, from the edit rooms to all that, we had all those advantages. So yeah, I think, I'm, I wanna say it was Baptized in Blood was the very first uh, DVD for, in professional wrestling. And and I remember when we we were all shocked, not only did we put a DVD out, but wait a minute, what? We beat it, we beat WWF and WCW to the, the point. only wrestling, professional wrestling DVD on the market. Yeah, and 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 I, I can't believe, I'm sorry to the fans that I've never even, remembered to bring that part up but so thank you gabriel for bringing that up because yeah. that was that was huge at the time to the point where like you said it was hard for them to ignore us now just just by the the fact that there's a pro wrestling dvd in it well i don't care which one it is let me get it right that's when we got on entertainment tonight on extra that that at one point not pro wrestling but xpw right. xpw was ranked the number four sports DVD. Right. It was either in North America or the world when that Baptized in Blood, the first ever uh, DVD home video came out. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we really kind of like, whoa, yeah. that's when it took off, yeah. And that, and that always uh, stuck in my head because I remember our video was a big thing and it finally came to the West Coast and our video had like a little kiosk in the Northridge Mall and I remember going around and checking it out for the first time and, you know, being knowing that, like, I'm an XPW, but I still wasn't on, on TV yet. But I was, you know, I was working out with the guys and all that. And I remember going to the RF video and then going to the Sun Coast, which was like upstairs or whatever. And looking, I remember if they had a list there or something like where you looked and like it was the only wrestling DVD in the store. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's impressive. Like, yeah, VHS. But the DVDs, and obviously, like like with anything, it's the new technology. It's the new right. thing. And you're like, wow, that's, that's, huh. And so that, alongside with the things that, look, like it or not, XPW was in your face for the things they did. It was, it was, it was, look, XPW was going to make news one way or the other. With for, the better or for better or worse. For better or worse. Yeah. It was gonna get. It was gonna. That, that's those stories were gonna unfold. Cause look, the the one example. Look, Supreme getting lit on fire. God rest his soul. And he he and, but <clears throat> he got lit on fire. If anything goes bad in that situation, that's gonna be, you're you're, you're forever infamous right. for being that wrestling organization that that happened. Yeah. But he 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 survives. It, it becomes part of the supreme lore and the hardcore legend, and and it becomes part of the XPW. You know, oh my God, did you see this match? You, and so it becomes part of the legend. Vic Grimes, one foot the other way, 
he's a pancake he's dead now it's news again and oh it's that wrestling company and somebody died and this and that but he didn't die he survives and now again part of the lore part of the the hardcore the the led the stories that are being told so it was like look at us look at xpw you want to shut us out and it's like you can't yeah for, for better or worse however what it was you know coincidence or, or just you know like i said just the perfect storm it just happened and and so many things could have gone wrong oh. but just enough things went right yeah and oddly enough most of them did go right um and you're right it was this whole like I don't have no idea what I'm going to see tonight. And it, nothing felt safe or controlled Yeah, and when we went into an arena. Um, and there were, there were a lot of moments that it's like, how did we get out of that? How did we, how did nobody get hurt? It, it's amazing, Gabriel, when you think about it. And, and touching back on, the, um, on the, the first DVD beating out WCW and WWF, the end of the day, we actually had advantages just being in Los Angeles. I know WWF was the... Um, they were they they still are they are the um, the Coca Cola right of this industry, yeah, yeah. WCW. Now you have AEW um, and, and a lot of in betweens. But um, being in Los Angeles, you you you're kind of in, in some ways in the hub of production technology. You know, uh, um, for for any sort of production, be, be it a be it an adult film company. We were we were around other companies that were filming that were doing this, and so we had so that in itself actually, I don't think it's uh, it, it, not enough credit, but I don't think it gets looked at as one of the aspects as to why we had all these advantages, and that was one of them being being in Tinseltown, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, well, brother. Um, Dude, this has been way too much fun, and it's been way too long. It this is, this has been a joy, man. And um, and we're we're gonna keep in touch now. Uh, I got your 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 new number. We haven't talked in years, dude. So, but we like I said in the beginning, uh, me and this guy here, we we were that close, man. And um, there you go. Yeah, I, I I get it mixed up too. Stream here, but uh, but but no, we were that close, man. And it's and this has been a lot of fun, dude. Um. Um, anything you want to say, uh, any plugs, any shout outs, anything to the fans before we wrap up here? Um, just, you know, to the fans, you know, thank you all for, for, you know, it's been 20 years and you guys are still talking about XPW still have questions about everything that happened. And, 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 you know, again, the, the stories, you know, the, 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 the wrestlers, the, the legends, the, the lore that, that, that comes with, with the, the XPW, and the history of XPW. So, you know, thank you guys for, for um, keeping us, uh, keeping at least the, the, the memory and the thoughts of, of XPW out there. Appreciate that very, very much. It means a lot. Uh, thanks always. Gratitude to the fans. Um, uh, big shout out to uh, Mr. Kevin Kleinrock, because uh, I don't think he gets enough credit uh, when it comes to uh, the, the mind that he has uh, for, for wrestling. Um, Shout out to Slammers, because without Slammers, there'd be there would have been no SCCW, there would have been no XPW. Yeah. Um, rest in peace, Supreme. Rest in peace, Felony. Rest in peace, D. Um, you know these things happened. Especially, I mean, D. We got to go to his funeral, and it was like a turnout like I'd never seen. But Lester hit hard because I wasn't able to well, you no, know, no, no. this whole COVID situation. And, uh, you know, we were unable to, uh, you know, properly say our, our goodbyes and same thing for felony. And, and man, I got stories for, for days, man, we could go on for days mm -hmm. with everything. Um, uh, shout out to, to you, man, for doing what you're doing. You're still going. I'm real proud of you. Um, Thank you. And, this has uh, been a lot of fun, and and I was approached with this idea uh, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, and I I didn't. But then when COVID happened, it was like, why the hell not? You know, and so this is, now. yeah, exactly. This has, been, this has been a lot of fun, and and again, I I talked about this before. Like, 
I, I never like because once I got into wrestling, I never wanted to like, even though Kefe was broken, I just never wanted to do that. And now it's just to the point where it's like, why not? You know, and and um, so I never talk like this. I mean, you remember, dude, I would always try to. And it's like, again, it's like when when Webb put that in the show. <laughs> <I> would, <laughs> you know? But um, but um, but no, this has been a great getting in touch with everybody. And and I'm and I actually got in touch with some fans that I remember from back in the day that have been in. Thank you guys for messaging me on my, um, my messenger. And, and also what's very cool too is young fans that weren't around that are like, Oh, what was this all about? So that's cool too. You know? So absolutely. Right on, right on. Well, uh, last, uh, let me see. Santino brothers, big shout out to the Santino brothers. Uh, Angel, oh, up to Angel, big my buddy, my buddy from uh, the yeah. old from the old days. We came up together. Everybody, man, so many, so many things. Um, I know I'm forgetting, but but thanks. Oh. And uh, if any any fans out there got any questions for uh, Quantastico, I would say go on the FB. What's that Facebook page for the XPW Facebook page? Oh, man. Uh, Put up a question on there. I'm on. I'm a. Uh, I'm uh, on that page. So put up a question on there, and uh, I'll answer it. Well, I got to tell you, we're gonna sign off right now from Extreme Memories. One tastico. Hey, pal. Hey, hey, wake up. What did you think of this one? Uh, this one was pretty good, man. <laughs> one tastico. All right. My name is Chris Kloss for my broadcast partner, One Tastico. This has been Extreme Memories on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you back here on the 15th and 30th of every month. Sayonara. Isn't that what they say in, down south of the border? Is that <laughs> Thank you for watching Extreme Memories, hosted by Chris Kloss. He's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th. You can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the Wrestling Chatter channel right here on YouTube. See you next time.